In the world of HVAC today, it's really important for HVAC professionals to understand the skin of a home. The skin is made of two things, the air tightness and insulation layers. And knowing how much insulation went into a home is pretty easy. It's a number, R13, R19, whatever it is. The air tightness is a little bit more tricky. And I'd like to explain why I actually don't like to see anything except an actual blower door estimate in the Manual J reports that I look at for my clients and that I build for my clients. By the way, I have two daughters, which is why I have painted nails. I apologize. Uh, Borador is the best way to do this. And I'm, I'm going to show you why the other ways of doing this inside of the Manual J software, which is the beginning of every HVAC sizing calculation, which is all about the skin. It's not about the equipment at all. Um, it is crazy when you start looking at how they're defaulting to these things. So I have a house being built inside of my Manual J software. There are two big Manual J softwares that people use. One is Elite Soft RHVAC. R stands for residential, CHVAC, not the same thing. I'll make another video on that topic um, soon. But the uh, other one is WriteSoft. And there are differences between the two, but they both are Manual J approved. If you see something that is, it looks like a load calculation, it's called a heat load calculation, but it doesn't say it's Manual J compliant, it's not a Manual J. So this one is Manual J. And what we have here is a house that I put in our hometown of Atlanta, Georgia. I have a block load, which is the really cheesy way of doing this is just treats the whole house as one big box. Uh, I don't recommend doing that if you actually want to know how many BTUs need to go into each room, how much heat bleed there is through each, each and every room. But for this uh, case, all we need to do is the volume. So you can see I've got a 20 foot wide, 50 foot long box that is a thousand square feet. And I've got three floors in that. So a 30 foot height that gives us a volume of 30,000 uh, cubic feet, which is a pretty standard volume for homes today. Um, so we ha you can see that I did put a floor and a roof and some walls in here. Uh, honestly, it doesn't matter because what we really need to drive down into is this part right here, which is the system data. So I have one system in here. It doesn't really matter how many systems you put into a home. Um, the infiltration only counts toward one, the entire building. So in infiltration right here, which is the fourth line down, you can see that there is a value built into this already, 0 0.21, 0 0.11. Who knows what those mean? I don't. Let's dig in. So you can see that we get winter infiltration for system one. If I clicked on the summer, it would do summer, and it would just sync the two together when I'm done. But you have two options here. The top half of this screen says manual J changes per hour method. And on the bottom, you've got blower door method. We are going to start with the manual J air changes per hour method. And by the way, the, the word air changes is very confusing in HVAC. So we're not going to deal with that right now, but just suffice to say, what we're talking about here is the actual air exchange from outdoors to indoors through air leakage in the skin of the home. So we've got this chart right here, which is basically tight, semi-tight, average, semi-loose or loose. It's these values in elite that you also have to select based on the square footage of your home. And so um, to show you how this works when I do it, we're gonna go down here and look at blower door. All you have to do is you, um, you come over here and you can either put the test flow, which is the CFM 50. And if you wanna know how to run a blower door test, I have a one day training that's online. It includes an hour of coaching with me. Uh, you can even get certified if you wanna challenge the exam. That's, uh, I'm linking on screen now for that if you wanna check that out. But you should know if you're building a home, what CFM 50 you're shooting towards. The ACH 50 or AC per hour, uh, ACH 50 is what we call that, is um, mandated in code, in energy code. And uh, incidentally, that is not a very good way of measuring air leakage because you'll see, let's, let's look right here. You can see that it punishes homes that are smaller. So the same tight home on a 900 square foot or less is gonna get 0.21 air changes. Um, but if you're a big fat house, you're gonna get less than half of that. So uh, small homes get punished by this ACH 50 number. But I, the, what, what I'm dealing with when I help my clients with manual J's, and, and part of the reason they come to me is because they think of what I do as an advanced manual J. I, that was what it was called uh, yesterday by one of my clients. And I think that's a very nice thought. I, it a little bit it, it offends me 
Because what I really am doing is doing the math the right way, the basic right way, um, by just understanding all of this stuff. And it is not hard for HVAC guys to be understanding this. So that's why I'm making videos like this. Now, the test air changes per hour that my clients are typically shooting for because they're really chasing after uh, energy efficiency and air tightness and comfort and health and noise control and all the things that are, are um, done by getting really airtight homes are one air change per hour or even 0 0.5 air changes per hour. That is called passive house airtight. My home that I'm talking to you from is passive house airtight, and I'm linking a video so that you can see the blower door test on my own house. Um, but those numbers are actually not represented in this manual J air changes per hour. I'm going to show you here. Uh, I kind of broke this out. So we've got, uh, if you look at, we've got this 3,000 square foot home and we've got tight, semi-tight, average, loose, semi-loose and loose. What these really equal out to after having explored this for about an hour is 1.7 ACH50 is the beginning. That's the tightest you can do on this default table. We go, we almost double to 3.2 for a semi-tight. And I would say that, that those, like for average builders, those are okay estimates. I don't think that they're that okay for reasons that I'll get into in a second, but, but they're like, they seem like they might be reasonable. Average about five ACH 50, that is required by code in many states across the country. Five air changes per hour is like the code maximum for air leakage. At that point, semi-loose, seven, and loose, those are like, who knows what's going on there? Because honestly, I've lived in homes that had way more than 10 ACH 50. So, say, so saying that loose is the loosest it gets is like, no way. I, could, I bet you could double that in a lot of older homes. So that's now we're, we're either like grossly overestimating the air leakage on the tight side or grossly underestimating it potentially on really old homes that are really leaky on the loose side. Um, and incidentally, one of the differences between Elite and Wrightsoft is that Elite makes you choose based on your square footage. And if you get this wrong, look at what happens. We started at 1.7 ACH, 1 ACH50. If we forget to move over to the right column, and by the way, there are two columns here. We got 3,000 square feet. Do I pick the 2,001 to 3,000? Or the 3,000 and up? Because they're, they both include 3,000. I could actually, it's at different values here. You can see that. So here we go, we start at 4 ACH50 for the tightest home that I can get on this table. We go all the way to 24.6. So that's what happens if you are running elite and you're not thinking clearly and you're trying to use these defaults, which you shouldn't be doing in the first place. Um, so when we go back over, I'm gonna delete that. When we go back over here, you can see that um, the blower door, I'm just gonna explain this real quick. If you were to put in the test ACH 50, which is, well, I'm gonna get into how to estimate this in a second, because knowing how to do that is the second part of the battle. But if you put in the ACH 50 and you just hit okay at, at 0.5, it will now set that as the value. That will show up, by the way, in your report that you run as basically zero CFM in the wintertime and summertime. So there will be no air leakage showing up in any of your loads on the rooms. And that's okay. It basically rounds down because it's so minimal. Um, but if you were to put the test flow in there or the test ACH 50, those are all great. You need to also make sure you come over here and visit how many stories are in your building. Cause right now I've got one story in this building. No way you want the number of stories above grade to be here. So two or three, or, uh, it, you, it doesn't let you go above three, unfortunately, but two is what I'd put for a building that would be like a basement and then two stories above grade, even if you walk up a couple steps to get there. Now, the one point test is what most people are using. I would not mess around with this multi-point and leakage area. Um, also don't mess around with the assumed N or the pressure differential. That all stays the same when people are running blower door tests. The way that you're going to estimate this air changes per hour 50 at 50 ACH 50 that you're shooting for is you're going to ask your builder, first of all, what, how many air changes per hour, how airtight are you building homes generally? And if they're an experienced builder and they have done blower door tests before, they should be able to tell you this. If they cannot tell you this, then you're going to need to do a little bit of homework. First thing I do is put in there the ACH 50 that is required by law in your state. 
and tell your builder you're doing that. Say, I'm going to, you know, it's required that we're going to be building to five air changes per hour. I'm going to put that in there because I'm assuming that you're complying with state law. And he says, of course I'm complying with state. What do, who do you think I am? Um, they might not be because the municipality might not be enforcing this, which doesn't change the fact that it's still a state law and they still could be sued by the buyer. Um, that's all beside the point. What you really need to, to drive at is if you're going to put five in here, what I might do, if you're trying to play it safe, and remember that there is fluff, there's fat built into Manual J already, but if you wanted to, you could put 5.49 because that is still five. And, and I know that because I teach people to use blower doors for code testing and the code says nice round number, it does not say 5.0. So they might be passing code at 5.49 and if you assume that it's just five, then they're getting an extra 10% air leakage that you didn't build into your calculation. So there's that. Um, but once you've gotten the number of stories right and your ACH 50 or your air changes per hour, and by the way, there's another couple things. If they're using zip system or force field or weather shield or any of those kind of WRB that are taped, the sheathing that is taped along the seams, and they're, they're trying even a little bit, I'd say three air changes per hour is where you're aiming. So semi-tight at the most. If they are really chasing after air leakage by doing multiple layers of this, by either using one of those WRBs and really trying to do it well, uh, or using a WRB and spray foam, or a WRB and aero barrier, or something like that. If they're multiple layering, then I'd say tight is the tightest I'd go. And in fact, I'm sorry, the tight default would be the loosest I'd go, and that's even wrong, because they're probably gonna get down to one air change per hour. So I'd say, I'd use this right here, and I'd say, uh, excuse me, I'd use the test air change per hour, and I'd say three, if they're using some air tightness strategy, and I'd say one, if they're really chasing after it, and if they're insane, um, meaning like me, then 0 0.5 might be something you would do, but you wanna be conservative about this, and once you get past like two, the point of diminishing returns is already kind of kicked into place, so you're not gonna get massively different sizing by going south of one, which might be why this uh, is like that on the defaults. They might think, oh, it just doesn't matter once you get that tight, which is kind of true. But honestly, I think that it does make a big difference because we're also in very tight homes going to be adding ventilation. And that is going to kick up the uh, latent load, the humidity that's being added to the house in the summertime and all the sensible stuff, the heat bleed that's happening in the wintertime and the summertime. And if we're doing that, we want to minimize, we want to actually put in the exact number that we can on the infiltration because that air leakage is going to hurt us and then some with the ventilation. Sorry to get really into the weeds with that, but the substantial obstructions piece is another piece of this. Who knows what this means? Windshielding level five is completely surrounded by structures. That would be like a little home surrounded by other homes that are within like 10 feet. They might be taller. They might be as tall. They're not going to be shorter. Uh, once you go down from here, substantial obstructions, more, more obstructions, few obstructions, or no obstructions. That would be a house standing in the middle of the desert, like, totally exposed to the wind on all sides. So trees count. That would be few obstructions. A couple of houses nearby, a neighborhood. It defaults to substantial obstructions, and so you should generally leave it there if you're working in a neighborhood. But these are all things that actually change the, what's going on. The one last thing that I'd like to point out is you might use this default thing because you see that the house has fireplaces in it. And number one, if the fireplaces are direct vent, meaning sealed combustion, meaning they have a glass, you can't reach in from the house and touch where the fire happens, um, the air in that fireplace has nothing to do with the house air. So you should not say that the house has fireplaces to this default tool. Uh, although I'm going to tell you in a second that it has a minimal effect because what you see over here is you can select the number of fireplaces, one, two, or three. And it actually shows you, it says value under fireplace construction, or for two fireplaces, it's going to add seven on top of that, or for three, it's going to add another three on top of that seven for 10. Um, so what it's saying over here is if we have a, a home that's uh, tight, that's 3,000 square feet, it's going to add zero CFM if we had one fireplace. If you have uh, a semi-tight home, it's gonna add 13 CFM, 
where are they getting these numbers? So we click on the help. And what the help says um, when you scroll down to the fireplace section is that they're not going to count the fireplace infiltration in the summertime because they're assuming that there is not a fire burning in the summer, which means that they are thinking that this infiltration number is going to be accounted for only when there is a fire burning, which again, remember, this calculator, Manual J, is all about the design day. It's actually probably about the design hour, more likely, which is the hottest day of the year, 99% hottest, or the 99% coldest day of the year. And so we don't have to worry about all that part load stuff because that's in the, in the weeds. What we're really aiming for is the coldest day of the year here, probably a fire burning. And the fact that they think that that fire is gonna be adding 13 CFM. Like I've actually measured this in the field and I know that a fireplace when it's burning and that includes gas fireplaces actually exhausts about 300 to 350 CFM from a home. So to say that at, even at a loose house, you're getting 33 CFM, I don't even know what that means. It should be 300 or 350, 10 times as much. And to say that it's at a tight home, it's not gonna be doing anything is crazy. There should be a, like a red flag on this saying, hey, by the way, the reason we're saying that is because your fireplace is not going to draw and all the smoke is actually going to come into the house. So it's actually a pretty good heating system at that point. It'll kill you, but it's going to be 100% efficient. That'd be great. Okay. So all of this is to say that I would not trust this top section at all when you're working with the kind of clients who watch this channel, who are really trying to get a very healthy, very airtight, very comfortable and long lasting and uh, all the nice things, quiet home. Um, if you're doing an existing home, do a blower door test. Don't assume one of these weird default values. And also this fireplace calculator, I don't even, it's total garbage in my opinion. So I hope that this has helped you. Um, Sorry to like just take you down the rabbit hole of within the software here, but this is the way that this has to work. If we were live in a class, then that'd be great, but those days are gone for me. So you could check out my online trainings at buildingperformanceworkshop.com. I've got lots of stuff coming. Um, I do live coaching. If you want to do a coaching where you're like actually in your software and you're trying to do things right, that's how I got my training. I actually hired a guy who is three levels ahead of me. Um, and, and I just had a video that I'm linking on screen with my trainer now on this stuff. So please do check all that stuff out. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, please do like, comment below if you have questions or comments. Tune in next time.